everyone, my name is Kelly, and I'm the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. A couple of you did guess when I did the behind the scenes video that I would be doing a soap using Bite Me. I'm going to read off my notes because there are quite a few different fragrance notes in this oil. It has black cherry, orange, strawberry, pineapple and lime and that lime really does shine through along with that black cherry. It also has notes of eucalyptus, violet and lily and is on a base of clove and vanilla bean. It does say that it has 0% vanillin but because it is such a sweet and very strong fragrance I decided it was best to keep to some dark colours for this one and I haven't put any white in there. Let's go and see how I make Bite Me. Okay, so let's start in my bucket here. I have my usual oil mix and you'll find my recipe down below in the description box. And in my other bucket here, I have my lye water solution. I'm going to pour the lye water down my stick blender just to avoid any splashbacks. I'm going to mix it up and then split it out for today's colors. today's colours. I'm actually only really using two colours and um, two of those pots have been darkened with a bit of activated charcoal. So in this one here I have some Berry Bliss Mica from Bath Bomb World and then in this one here I have that Berry Bliss again which I have mixed with some activated charcoal and these have also been um, mixed up with a bit of the oils from out of my soap batter just to make it a bit easier to blend in. This one here is some really red mica from Nurture Soap and then in this final jug I have some more of that really red mica and it is mixed with some activated charcoal to get a really nice nice dark red. And what I'm going to do is finish splitting this batter up evenly between these four jugs and then I'm going to mix the colours in and then hand mix in my fragrance. oil is smelling absolutely amazing. It is quite cool here today. My room's sitting at about 18 degrees so my oils were a little bit thicker than normal and when I added in this fragrance oil it really did thin my batter out so I'm really quite pleased about that. What I'm now going to do is I honestly don't know what this technique is called. Um, basically I'm layering all of my colours in here. I usually call it on my own little notebooks here uh, in the pot slide. I really don't know what it's called. It's not quite a Clyde slide because usually um, when I've seen those done you have a base colour and then you pour your colours in to the pot in this sort of manner. But I haven't done one of these, I don't think I've actually done one of these sort of slides on video before but I have done them when I first started soap making and I used to love the effect that you got from them so I thought we'd give this one a go. So I'm just going to keep pouring my soaps in until I've got all of this batter in here. my mold here and I am just going to simply pour this in and I am going to pour from one end and just let the soap take itself down the mold and hopefully we'll get some really good swirls out of this one. So we're almost there. It's already looking pretty awesome there. I'm gonna just help move that along. Whoa and we're very full. I did actually make a little bit more batter in this one that I needed 
because I want to do a high top on this one but because this has stayed so fluid what I'm going to do is just leave this for a couple of minutes until that thickens up and then I can put the rest of this on the top now someone and I've forgotten your name sorry I'll have to go back through they did mention that they've seen people actually spray the tops of these soaps um, with a bit of rubbing alcohol just to help set them up a bit so I'm going to give that a go and see what happens I'll come back in a moment and finish off the top Okay, so while I was waiting for that to set up, I have just scraped out the last of those buckets. And all I'm going to do is just gently pour the rest of this on the top, just to get a little bit of a higher top to put our embeds onto. So just also want to say thank you for giving me that tip about spraying a bit of rubbing alcohol on the top of here just to speed up that setting process. I can see it actually has worked. The top of the soap um, does look a lot thicker but you can also tell that underneath is still nice and fluid so that is a excellent tip thank you and I am just going to finish getting this on here nice and evenly and then I will come back and pop the embeds on okay so this soap is begging for two more things to be done before putting the embeds on I am loving this purpley color and you just can't have a nice rich purple without a good spritz of gold so there is a little bit of extravagance gold mica on there and then just to tie in a little bit more with my embeds I have some clear melt and pour and I'm going to drizzle some on here now whenever I pick up my melt and pour to avoid getting lots of bubbles in here I always push the end of my pipette first then into the soap and pull it up and you just get far less bubbles when you do it this way and I am just going to add some drizzles I don't want very heavy lines I just want those sort of dotted bits so that hopefully once everything comes together it will look like little droplets of blood on the top so again i'm just going to squeeze it down pull a bit more up and that just stops those bubbles okay i am really pleased with how that is looking so now i'm going to go grab the embeds so here are the embeds that we're using today. These are the teeth that we made in the behind the scenes video this week and we made them using some melt and pour soap. The mold that I had, I had a couple of people asking me where I got the mold from. I actually got it from off of eBay. If you are wanting to find them on eBay, I would suggest putting in a search like vampire teeth mold um, or silicon mold just so that it takes out all of if you put in teeth mold, you get all these really weird dental um, molds come up as well. But if you put in vampire teeth silicon mold, you will find one of these um, vampire teeth molds. I am going to put them in so that they're on a little bit of an angle. And that will hopefully mean we will get a whole set of teeth on each of the bars of soap here. And I will more than likely cut this one with the individual bar cutter just to make sure that we don't cut any of these teeth. Alright, so I'm going to actually fast forward through this bit so that I can make sure that I have these properly lined up. And then once I have got them all in, I will bring you down for that closer look of the Bite Me Soap. this tooth it looks like it's got a little ghost sitting in it it's screaming I noticed it when I actually did the unmolding of them but forgot to say anything when I did the behind the scenes video so they are now all in I am pretty sure I'm going to be right for cutting these at least with the single bar cutter that one there is looking pretty good so I'm going to um, bring you down for a closer look of bite me so here it is up close. I am absolutely loving those teeth and all those little droplets of red melt and pour. And that gold just really brings the top to life. The fragrance oil is so good. It smells so strong and it behaved really, really well. So I highly recommend it. I'm going to leave this one sit overnight and come back tomorrow and cut it open. And we'll see what swirls we've got on the inside. 
Bite Me is now ready to cut and look at the sides of this loaf. I am loving that and can't wait to see what we've got on the inside. As mentioned, I'm using my single bar cutter on this one today just to try and avoid cutting any of those teeth. I hopefully will get my full size bars out of this. I'm just going to nudge that one down a little bit. This end bar will probably end up being a little bit smaller, but that will be my piece of soap. So let's get this one cut. And then we'll have a look at what we've got on the inside. So I'm just missing the tips of those teeth. I'm going to skip showing you this first one because, well, the end of it is going to be a solid colour. All right, so we'll move on and we'll cut this one and then I'll show you what we've got on the inside here. So just going slowly, making sure I'm missing those teeth. And it is a very, very fine line there but we have actually missed them so let's grab this piece out and have a look and that is what the inside of bite me looks like i am really really pleased with how that one has swirled together it's just so intricate there and i'm loving those teeth sitting on the top too those colors have come up really well i really like that you've got the darker shades of each of those two colors we'll get the Ooh. next one cut this fragrance oil is smelling really strong, so it's another really good one to use. And oh, I'm hoping that it is going to hold throughout that cure. You really do get the smell of the cherries and the lime coming through on this one. It's almost got that sort of bubbly smell that I really like in a fragrance oil. So I am really, really impressed with it. I will definitely use this fragrance again, and I'm really, really loving the swirls out of this pour. So I will definitely remember to use that technique a few more times just to get those really interesting pours. Um, so I have to admit, I was a little bit nervous about doing the teeth on this soap. I wasn't sure how people would actually react to it. I'm really, really pleased though that I went ahead with it because everyone seems to have reacted really well to them over on the behind the scenes video. So I'm hoping that everyone is going to actually like them on the teeth as well. I am loving how the swirls have that real hypnotic sort of look to them. So I think that ties in beautifully with those vampire teeth. And I'm pretty happy that I did decide to go ahead with putting the teeth on the top of this one. I'm also loving those little blood splashes on the top of the soap too. So I hope you have enjoyed watching how I make my Bite Me Soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you do have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and then you won't miss out on any other soap making videos that I do bring out. So until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great week and I will see you then. Bye.